so a very good afternoon to you all today our topic is transport system in plants now when we are talking about transport system in plants the first thing which comes to our mind is that uh, how do the plant transport is there any kind of circulatory system or is there uh, any tissues or any tube like structure present in the plant to transport the water or the food materials the answer is the plant is having a well developed vascular system which we humans don't have we are having circulatory system our circulatory system comprised of blood and lymph that provides throughout the food material in our body but when we are talking about plant the plant is having a well developed vascular system the vascular system of the plant allows the movement of the water minerals and the food particles now what is this uh, water minerals or the food particles the xylem of the plant will allow the movement of the water and the minerals whereas the phloem of the plant will allow the movement of the food now let us say the xylem when uh, the xylem is uh, conducting the water and minerals from where do they get the water and minerals the water and mineral absorbed by the roots from the soil now slowly it will be transported to the xylem and from the xylem to the different parts of the plant similarly the phloem after getting the raw materials it will process the food it will pass it to the leaves means the leaves will provide the food and the leaves through the leaves the phloem will conduct the food to the different parts of the plant means in a simple language the xylem conducts the water and minerals and the prepared food by leaves will be conducted by the phloem so the movement of the xylem will be from bottom to top whereas the movement of the phloem will be from top to bottom these things we must make a clear note the phloem will transport the food which is prepared by the leaf from the top to the bottom whereas the xylem will transport the water and mineral from bottom to the top now we need to know that what tissues the plant are made up of the plant is generally made up of two kinds of tissues namely the permanent and the meristematic tissue now first of all we will see what is meristematic tissue meristematic tissue are the tissue which allows the growth and the division of the plant now how the growth and the division of the plant do take place the growth and the division of the plant is taking place due to the presence of the meristematic tissue the meristematic tissue is having a well living protoplasm but it lack vacuole somewhere of the meristematic tissue vacuoles are present but some meristematic tissue do lack the vacuoles having said this now what is protoplasm protoplasm means the whole living constituents of the cell and vacuole means the storage part the vacuole stores either liquid or food particles now there are two kind of meristematic tissue apical meristem and lateral meristem apical meristem allows the growth of the root and the shoot whereas the lateral meristem allows the growth of the width of the plant means it will be present at the bark at the stem the lateral meristematic tissue is also called as cambium now apart from this the plant is also having permanent tissue the permanent tissue are the tissues which comprised of cell which has no capacity to divide in simple language we must understand this the permanent tissue cannot divide the permanent tissue will only divide when there is any kind of new permanent tissue now the new permanent tissues are the tissues which has just came from meristematic tissue to the permanent tissue but when this new permanent tissue will become old they will also lack the condition of division now so generally all the permanent tissues are old they have loosened their capacity to divide then what is their main function the main function of the permanent tissue is to protect is to conduct conduct means water and minerals and food protection means to give protection to the plant to the roots now having said this as per our book page number 14 it is already mentioned about simple permanent tissue permanent tissue again it is having simple permanent tissue as a type which is having two parts protective and supportive so from the name itself we can infer the meaning what is protective and what is supportive protective tissue means the tissues which will protect for example it is written here very clearly the tissue protects the plant from external influences it is made up of epidermis which forms the outer protective layer of the plant that means it will form the outer protective layer of the plant and it is present generally in the epidermis what is epidermis 
the epidermis is the outer covering of the plant the plant which is having the outer covering let's say this my one finger is a kind of small little plant so the outer covering of this is known as epidermis similarly for humans also the outer covering of the skin is called as epidermis just like the plant i hope it's clear to you till here now supportive tissue this tissue comprises the bulk of the plant body and gives support to it they are of three types so it is supporting the whole bulk of the plant whole bulk of the plant means the whole weight of the plant resides upon the supporting tissue they are of three types parenchyma Colenchyma and sclerenchyma, their types are given in page number 15. You must go through those types. Now, in parenchyma and colenchyma and sclerenchyma, do remember that you have to go through the diagram and at least three three points each from parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma you have to memorize. Now, next is complex permanent tissue. So, this is what about simple permanent tissue that is protective and supportive. And complex permanent tissue is having two types, xylem and phloem. Xylem, as we all know, we have had we have had a brief discussion on xylem that it conducts the water and mineral. But when we will open up xylem, when we will see inside xylem that what kinds of cells are present, we can find xylems are having xylem tracheids, xylem vessels, xylem parenchyma, and xylem fibers. So xylem tracheids and xylem vessels. Xylem tracheids and xylem vessels, you can see in page number 15, you have given a well description about xylem elements. There they have shown, figure 1.3, page number 15, there they have shown three kinds of cell, xylem vessel, xylem tracheids and xylem fiber. So these are the three main cells. Out of this, tracheids are very much thick and they are having lignin deposition. Vessels are joined from one end to the other end. Now, the way the vessels and the tracheids are joined, it means that vessels and tracheids, they are having an end-to-end -end connection, just like a wire like this, end-to-end -end they will be connected. I hope you can see my two fingers meeting each other. This is how the xylem vessels and tracheids are connected, so that the water and the dissolved minerals can very nicely flow through it. Fine. Apart from that, the xylem, the dead cells of xylem, it is written in page number 15, last paragraph. The dead cell of xylem are joined end to end to form long tubes to conduct water. As I have said you, the cells of tracheids and vessels are non-living and lack protoplasm. Protoplasm means living content is not present there. Living content is not at all present. They help in the conduction of water from roots to the upper parts of the plant. As I have said earlier, they help in the conduction of the water and minerals. So that the water and minerals will reach the leaves. There, the plant will go through the process of photosynthesis. Food will be prepared. Once the food is prepared, phloem will carry the food from the leaves to the different parts of the plant. I hope it's clear to you. Now, xylem parenchyma. It is the only living component of xylem. It stores starch as food and conducts water. So, there are four parts of xylem. Xylem carries four parts. Four parts of xylem, that is xylem vessels, xylem tracheids, xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber. Out of these four parts, three parts made up of dead cells. So you can say the three parts of the xylem, that is xylem tracheids, xylem vessels and xylem fiber made up of parenchyma. That is parenchyma permanent cells. I repeat. Xylem vessel, xylem tracheids, and xylem fiber made up of parenchyma permanent cells. Whereas only xylem parenchyma is made up of living cells. Since it is made up of living cells, so it is storing the starch and the food material and the water too. Sometimes the xylem fiber do act as xylem parenchyma, but that is in a very rare condition, especially for the xerophytes plant or the desert plants. Now, next is the phloem. Phloem, that is the, it is responsible for the transportation of food material. Similarly, here phloem is also com comprised of four cells, that is sieve cells, phloem parenchyma, phloem fibers. Sieve tubes, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. Inside the sieve cells, we can also find companion cells. So you can say that sieve cells and companion cells are one and the same or else you can also say the sieve cells and the companion cells are two different cells. So these sieve cells and the companion cells are also called as sister cells. 
I repeat, they are also called as sister cells. Why? Because sieve cells and the companion cells, they both together join each other and they help in the transportation of the food. Whereas the phloem parenchyma is the living matter. So here it is written very nicely in your book. The cells are elongated in phloem parenchyma I am talking about. The cells are elongated with rolled ends. These are living cell and store food as starch. So see, in phloem, like xylem parenchyma, it was storing starch, food and water. But phloem parenchyma is also a living cell. So both the living cells, xylem parenchyma as well as the phloem parenchyma, shares the same function that is to store the water and the food material. But the other part, like xylem vessels, xylem crackets, xylem fiber helps in the conduction of water and mineral. Similarly, the sieve tubes, the companion cells as well as the phloem fibers, they help in the conduction of the food material. Xylem fibers and phloem fibers again having one function in common that is they provide protection to the plant. Similarly, phloem fiber also protect, gives protection to the plant. Xylem fiber also gives protection to the plant. Is that clear? I hope it is clear for you. In page number 16 itself, you can find the difference between xylem and phloem is given to you. Apart from this, now the next topic is in page number 17 that is about absorption of water and minerals. Now, how the water and minerals are absorbed? The water is absorbed by two means. One is by osmosis, another one is by diffusion. So whenever we are talking about what is osmosis and what is diffusion, these are the processes that we will deal tomorrow. So we need to know here two things. The water is absorbed by plants by two means, either by osmosis or by diffusion. Whereas the minerals are absorbed by the plant in the in, by the process of active transport. So active transport is the process which is involved in the absorption of mineral, well as xylem and whereas so, I'm sorry, whereas osmosis and diffusion is the process which is involved in the absorption of the water. I hope it's clear to you. Tomorrow we will discuss all the processes one by one like osmosis, diffusion, active transport and all. I hope you will like this video and you will be understanding it. Thanks a lot.